Welcome to the Brandstand Woodwind Shop. This is the next video in the Restoring an Enharmonic Euphonium series. This instrument has valves that are very loose and they are going to need to be replated. Here are the valves. These are brass and that's probably because the plating has been worn off over the years. Not all valves get plating. Some valves are made out of Monel and others are made out of stainless steel. And those ones do not get plating, but these ones should have plating on them and they don't. Uh, what I mean by loose valves, I mentioned before about loose valves, is that if you put the valve in, you can see that it moves around a bit and there is a gap between the inside of the casing and the face of the valve and that's because the plating has worn off over the years and I'm going to grab another valve here this is number one that goes in there you can see that there's there's quite a bit of play in there it's um, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but there is uh, several thousandths of an inch of gap there. What happens when there's too much gap is that the air leaks out when you're playing it, and that makes it have a stuffy sound, especially in the lower register. So I am going to get these valves plated to fill in that gap. On this valve, you can actually see the gap even in the video. I'm going to move that up and down. You can see the gap right there and you can actually hear the valve moving around in it. Valves are usually nickel plated and if this was a small gap I would just put a little bit of nickel plating on here but there is actually a large gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to get copper plating on the valve uh, and that's going to be a thicker layer of copper plating. I'm going to fit this in there and then I'm going to make it so that there is still a little gap in there probably about a thousandth or two thousandths of an inch gap. And then after that, I'm going to send this valve out again for replating. I'm going to get it nickel plated the next time. After I get a thin coat of nickel plating on the valve, then I can fit the valve into the casing without destroying the casing. I'm going to start by removing the valve guides. Usually those valve guides are threaded in, but they may be soldered also. I'm not sure. So I'm going to take a flat jawed pliers and I'm going to grab onto what's left of that. There's not a lot left of this valve guide. And I'm going to try to uh, unscrew that. Let's see, it not, does not seem to be moving. I got the valve guide out and it was threaded and it looks like what happened is it probably got stripped so someone soldered it in there and then filed it down to make it fit. So I got one out. I'm going to work on getting the other ones out of there. And my guess is probably all the other ones are stripped too. On the other three valves, I had to use a little needle file to file those down. And now those are even with the surface of the valve. This is what the valve guides look like. They have the flat end and then they have the threaded end that screws into the valves. As you can see, this hole is way too big, so I'm going to have to take care of that. On the other valves, I'm going to have to drill a hole and then tap out the valves to make the threads so that I can screw that into there. But I'm going to put the valve guides on later. These go on after the valve is plated and totally finished. I drilled some holes in the valves where the valve guides need to go. I'm going to deal with that later, but I did want to get the hole, at least a pilot hole started there so that I can work on that later. Next, I need to uh, do a couple things. I need to make sure that the valves are straight. And also, there are a lot of... Uh, spots where the valves got dented in and that's going to need to be built up with solder. I think the first thing I need to do is straighten out the valves. I do not want to send these valves into Anderson plating bent because then when I get them back they're going to be even worse. So I'm going to find the correct uh, mandrel here. Okay, this one that one feels like it's straight. Uh, there are two ways of seeing if they're straight. That's one of them. Okay, that, that feels fairly straight too. Okay, these are going in without too much problems. This is one of the larger ones though. That one... That one's a little tight. This is the one where I did all the work on the ports, so I may not have filed down the solder enough. 
The other way of seeing if the valves are bent is to use the iron block. This has a very smooth and flat surface, so what I'm going to do is take the valves and roll them around on this block, and I'm going to see if there are any gaps that open up underneath there. So I'm going to hold this up to the light and roll that around, and I think we do have a bend here. So I'm seeing a large gap right there on one side. If I turn the valve around, then it rocks back and forth. So I need to deal with this valve. Okay, this one has a fairly large gap too, but that's because the valve is dented in, so I'm going to have to uh, fill that with solder. I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. There's my pegboard. If I go up a little higher, there's the light. And what I'm going to do is hold up the block Let's see, I usually don't do this with a camera. Okay, there's the block. And I put the valve on it like that. And then I look and I check the gap there. And see how there's a gap in the middle? And then I turn it around. And this valve is quite messed up. Okay, now see how that it rocks back and forth. But it's rocking on just one point though, so, uh, okay there, it's rocking. So you, what you're looking for is a rock on one side, and then you can turn it around, and then there is a gap on the other side. Now if it rocks on one side, you turn it around, it rocks on the other, then there's something else going on. But it looks like there is a bend in this valve, so I'm going to try to straighten that out. So I have to figure out which direction to bend it and where to bend it. Okay, so that way there's a gap. If I turn it around, there's the teeter. This valve is bent about right here, and it's bent up this way. So I'm going to put it in the sleeve up to about here. Usually what I would do is take my rawhide mallet and give it a light tap at the end. The problem with that on this valve is because it has so many holes, it will probably bend here instead of where I want it to bend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another mandrel over that uh, to about right there. And then I'm going to tap on it. I don't know if that did anything or not. So you don't want to tap too hard at first. So now I'm going to check this and see how it bent. I checked that out and it didn't really do anything to it. So I'm going to tap it a little bit harder this time. You want to start tapping lightly and then you can move up on how much you tap later. Okay, we'll see how that did. Okay, that, again that did about nothing. So I'm going to... Tap it a little harder. I'll just keep tapping it harder until it starts to move. Okay, it did start to move that time, so I need to go a little farther though. I'm going to tap it again. We're almost there. This time it looks like the bend is a little closer, so I'm going to put that in not quite as far. I'm going to keep doing that until the valve is fairly straight. Now this valve is not going to be perfect, but the imperfections will be covered up by the plating to some extent. So uh, anyway, I'd like it to be perfect, but the reality is a valve like this that's had so much work done to it over the years and is so worn down, it's not going to be perfect. I worked on the valve and it's a lot better than it was. One thing I noticed from rolling it around on the block is that this part right here is a little too high. That's the part I worked on before, so I'm going to have to file that down a little bit more to get it to be more flush with the surface of the valve. So I'm going to file that down a little bit more and try to get that so the surface is even. And you just do what you need to do to get the job done. This is the valve that has the ports that I replaced. So when I replaced this port, there's a thin little section right here, and it did push that up. And the way I can tell is I put it into the sleeve, and then it starts to stick right about there. So I know that this is a little bit high, so I'm going to file that down a little bit too. And I'm just going to file it a little bit, and then stop and then I'm going to keep 
checking the on the sleeve to see how that fits in there. Still a little tight. I'm going to go from the other direction too. Yeah. I noticed that the valves at the end looked like they were tapered inward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the smaller mandrel here and put it in there. I'm going to take my flute head joint expander. I'm going to put that in the bottom of the valve. I'm going to expand the valve and then the casing sleeve makes sure that the valve does not expand too far. If I don't have the valve inside of something like this, the end of the valve is going to expand too much and then it's going to cause a lot of other problems. So I'm going to expand that to the casing. Now it doesn't want to come out as easily. So there, now that is more cylindrical. This valve has several dents in it, so I'm going to fill that in with some solder. But first of all, I need to clean that up so that the solder sticks to it. I'm going to clean that up with some sandpaper. Now usually you don't use sandpaper on valves, but in this case you do. One of the rare cases that you would ever use sandpaper on valves. I cleaned up all the places that need to be cleaned, so now I'm going to put solder on there. So I'll heat that up. Put a little flux on there. Heat it up some more. And well, try to do this as good as I can. Um, I cannot say that I've ever done this before. It's not something that you do. Every, oh, there goes the solder. It's not something that you do every day. Need a little more flux. Now this is not going to be a neat job. It's going to be kind of messy. So what I'm going to do is fill in the holes and then when I'm done, I'm going to file it down to where it needs to be. So it's not going to look neat when I first get the solder in there. So what I'm going to do is go around the valve and fill in all the holes and make it so that the solder sticks out farther than the surface of the valve and then file it down. Here's the very ugly valve. Now I'm going to file this down and to make sure that I don't go too far what I'm going to do is take this mandrel and I'm going to file it down until it fits in there. Then when it fits I know I've gone far enough. About the ugly valve, it does not really matter what things look like in the middle of a job. What only matters is what it looks like at the end of a job and also how well it works at the end of the job. So we're not going to worry about what it looks like now. Usually the customer does not see what things look like in the middle of the work. Of course, you're seeing what it looks like, but that's because I'm getting a video of it. I'm also using the triangular knife to take down some of the high spots, and this works a little bit faster. So I start out with the triangular knife if I need to, and then go to the file. I straightened out the valves as good as I could. If I take the metal block and roll that around on there and look at where the gaps are, they are all over the place on this. That does not necessarily mean that they're bent. In this case, it means that the valves are warped and they probably have dents in them and they have been messed up a lot over the years. So I've done what I could with straightening them. Now I'm going to lap them and that's going to take down some of the high spots. I have two different grits of lapping compound. This is the Fariz Ultra Smooth Lapping Compound and this is what I almost always use. This is the 600 grit. It is a lot coarser grit and that's going to take down some of the high spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mandrel and I'm going to get the medium sized one that I have here. And I'm going to uh, put some of this heavy grit lapping compound on here and I'm going to work the valve back and forth inside of the casing mandrel. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to take down the high spots on the valve, at least somewhat, before it gets plated. That will make the valves more cylindrical. Uh, they won't be perfect after I do this, but I'm just trying to get them ready to send out for plating. I want them to be a little bit better than they are before I send them out for plating. So I'm going to do this on all of the four valves. I'm going to take down the high spots a little bit, and then after that they will be ready to send out for plating. I thought I was going to send the valves out, but this video is already long enough, so that will have to wait till the next video. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.